talking about the Shijo poem. Let's just popcorn here. What are some things that we remember about writing a Shijo poem? Trevor? 44 to 46 syllables. Total. Very good. What else? 14 through 16 syllables per line. Good. What else? Trevor? It can be three or six lines. Excellent. Good. So we've got that option. Either the three line shijo or the six line shijo. Let's talk about the themes. Yes. Right. We have three themes. Brian, what's one of the three? Cosmological. Excellent. And what does that represent? Like, uh, the, it's got like stars and the moon and stuff like that. Universe. Yeah. Excellent. What's another one? Okay, metaphysical. What does that represent? Like more physical. The, our daily existence as, as human beings, as man, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's the third one? Some of you. Good, you got it, Sam. And what, is that, what does that represent? The rustic view of, um, I believe the pastoral had several different, like love, yep. um, politics. All right, very good. Right, so we were talking last time about the plot cycle, right? The introduction, the rising action, the climax, right? The same thing's going to happen in your shijo. And here is how you break it up. Brian, you got it? Uh, line one of the three line pattern introduces a situation or problem. Line two develops the idea. And line three, the twist provides climax and closure. Perfect, right? We remember that from last class. The next bullet, Kelsey? Um, remember the three characteristics that make the shijo unique. Structure, musical, rhythmic elements, and the twist. All right, let's talk about that. Musical or rhythmic elements. What are we talking about there? <coughs> could be rhyme. What else could it be? Shijos are meant to be songs. How can we make the words inside our shijo feel like lyrics? Tell a story. Good. Tell a story. What else? Brian. Maybe like repeat. Like what you're saying? Yeah, good. We saw that in a bunch of the Shijos last class, right? That the end tied back to the beginning. One of them had a question at the beginning and then a question at the end. Another one had um, repeated words at both the beginning and the end. That's a great way to frame your Shijo, to tie it all together. It also, I think, makes it feel lyrical. What else could we do? We've got rhyme, we've got repetition. Write it in phrases, exactly. So instead of complete thoughts, just focus on phrases. Let's do one more. How else can we make our shijo feel like a song? Ah, perfect. Similes and metaphors and all of those sort of stylistic devices like alliteration, like repetition, etc. Okay, so we've got that shijo are meant to be songs. The spring breeze melted snow on the hills and quickly disappeared. I wish I could borrow it briefly to blow over my hair and melt away the aging frost forming now about my ears. What do we notice about that? Right, there's tons of stylistic devices. I think maybe the melt away the aging frost forming about my ears, like that's not literal, right? It's, yeah. it's metaphoric is what you're going for. What other stylistic devices did you see there? What about the second line? Yeah. What, what oh, do you yeah. see? Borrow, briefly, blow. Alliteration. Alliteration. And what else? Kind of the rule of thirds. I used Definitely the rule of thirds. Borrow, briefly, blow, and alliteration. Uh, do we see other instances of alliteration here? Yep. The bottom line. Uh, frost forming. And away aging. Yeah, in a way, aging. Very good, very good. Any other comments on this one? Yeah. One thing they don't really do is break up the like grouping of syllables. Mm -hmm. If we had to say in that first line, what would we guess the groupings are? What's the first grouping? I think so. The spring is the first grouping. What's the second? Melted snow. Good. Melted snow. The third grouping? On the, on the hills. And then finally after the comma? And quickly disappear. Exactly. Yeah. So they're, they're breaking up the line more by theme 
rather than punctuation. Some of them we saw last class were really strong, strongly broken up by punctuation. Here it's more by theme or by, or by words. Green grass covers the valley. Do you sleep? Are you at rest? Or where is that lovely face? Can mere bones lie buried here? I have wine, but no chance to share it. Alone, I pour it sadly. What do we notice about this one? Yeah, go for it. Indentation. Yeah, what do you think about that? Um, kind of start something new. I think so. Right? It's something interesting to think about. Think about what you can do with space in your shijo. They have limited your structure to some extent here, but you still can play with how you place your words, how you place the lines on your page. What about punctuation? Lots of questions. Questions make you think. They make you think um, a little bit deeper than maybe um, some of us like to be. Mm -hmm. And then what's the twist? He's alone. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's emotion filled too, right? These are lyrical, so you want to infuse your shijo with some sort of emotion. We talked last class about your story, mm -hmm. right? That think about too the emotion, the senses, all of that stuff that you can include. All right, so we've got here at the bottom additional things that you should be thinking about as you're composing your shijo. So think about your theme, what story you're going to tell, what the point of that story is, what your twist is, what structure you're going to use, your punctuation, your groupings your stylistic devices, and then finally, if you're going to have a title or not. That is a lot to think about. We'll keep that up there for you as you're working. But what we want you to do is open up the document that you started yesterday and begin composing your shijo. Our goal by, I think we're going to aim for what time, Mrs. Hamilton, maybe? Uh, before the end of first period. That would be awesome. Yep. Should we aim for the second period? We want everyone to have some sort of draft yes. of their shijo. And I think we have a great start. I think most of us, like Nick, Sam, and Kelsey, and Trevor, now we just got to count syllables and make sure that we're away from the speech. This year is the first year that we have gone one-to-one -one at Arrowhead, so every student is required to bring a device with them to every single one of their classes. Um, sometimes the teacher uses the device, other times they don't. Uh, you'll notice that our kids were super good with pulling out the device when we told them to and using the device appropriately. Um, we. All of the things that I projected, I have shared with the students electronically. So there was no need for them to take notes. They could instead just listen to the lecture, sort of absorb it, ask questions as they had them. And then later on, if they were still confused or if they wanted to relook at something, they can just open up the file that I've shared with them and reference it. And I think you'd probably notice that some of the students were doing that. They were like, wait, what was that theme or what was that example again? They'd go into the folder, open it up. And it's essentially the notes are already there for them that I was projecting. So each student in creative writing has a Google folder that they have shared with me. Everything that the students do, they put into that Google folder. That then allows me to go into that folder because they've shared it with me. I can see everything that's in there. I can comment on it. I could either do that verbally, right, in class, or I could do it electronically. I could just add little notes or comments. I really find it is an effective way to to manage the time, right? There's no time wasted with handing in papers, passing back papers. It's just instantaneous. It's right there on my screen to either share with the whole class or just to look at myself. So our goal by the end of Thursday's class is to have a nice solid draft. And then after that, I'll go into all of their documents, correct them, give them feedback. They'll probably do some peer editing, like what Heidi was referencing. Um, and then we'll keep going from there. Normally, I try to read everything that kids write at least three times. So they'll Read it, I'll read it, I'll give them some feedback, they'll make some changes, I'll go in there again and look at it. We'll do that process three times, and then hopefully at that point it'll be ready to send off to you guys. I feel like the more time that I put in to editing students' work, the more time I put in giving feedback and comments, 
the better the class is, right? The more engaged the students are, the more invested they are. They, they know, hey, my teacher really cares. And if I don't have this rough draft done, my teacher's gonna go in there and she's gonna make comments and she's gonna be upset with me. And so kind of like our principal was saying, the kids really do want to please their teachers. And so if, I, if I'm holding them accountable, if I'm saying at the end of class today, I'm gonna go in that folder and give you feedback on your rough draft, they really do try to make those rough drafts as good as they can get them because they know the better that rough draft, the better the feedback they're gonna get from me. And the, the, the further we can push that poem, right? If you give me a really good draft, my feedback's gonna be super specific and we can push that even further than we could have had your draft been not so good. Uh, a group of friends running, laughing, and playing, not a care in the world. Life is easy, life is free, and life is never ending. <coughs> At the end of the day, in the nursing home, they call their grandchildren. Oh, Brian, that's good. Very good. The twist is so strong there at the end. What else do we notice? Rule of thirds. Where? Uh, life is easy, life is free, and life is never ending. Uh -huh. And I like how you're saying life is easy. And then that line, too, is easy to get through. Right? It's not, it's not hard to understand. It sort of mimics the theme in the structure. And when you think of a group of friends running, laughing, and playing, you don't think of old people in a nursing home. You think of kids in recess on the playground. So I like how you really capture us thinking that it's a, a group of young, young children. Where are you in the writing process? Uh, I just wrote all my like, this is like my basic ideas, but I haven't like formatted it yet to like get the rules. Yeah. So you need to check syllable count. Yeah. Um, the one thing that's sticking out to me is not a care in the world. What kind of phrase is that? Cliche. Cliche. So what would be our suggestion then for Brian? Yeah, get rid of it in, in, change, uh, or in exchange for what? A better, way to say it. a better way to say it. Yeah, a way that you could only say it, right? Something more specific. However, if you read through this and find out that your syllable count works, you might just be able to take it right out and not need to replace mm -hmm. it. A group of friends running, laughing, and playing. Life is easy, life is free, life is never ending. I don't know, though, because we haven't counted the syllables. Awesome job, Brian. Nice job, Thank Brian. you. Uh, I wrote a metaphysical shijo about uh, like the challenges of growing up and losing your youth and uh, what I did is I kind of wrote about uh, like an old or I wrote about like a bunch of old men playing in the park together but I didn't really say that they were old men until the end and that was the twist of mine. Uh, I thought it was more challenging because well, what I had trouble with was coming up with the twist at the end and uh, I just f thought that was kind of hard because usually my writing isn't very surprising at the end and I just had trouble with that. I like it because of the twist. Uh, I think it's kind of cool to be surprised at the end and it's interesting. Um, I think like just writing like I think it's interesting how there's like three lines and there's six lines and you have to choose which one like I think that's the hardest part but I chose six lines and I feel like that was more harder. I wrote about the Dust Bowl because I used I wrote an essay last year about the Dust Bowl and I thought it was an interesting topic so I felt like that would be a lot more like deep to write about. I thought of a twist right away, it wasn't difficult for me. My twist was that my mother died, I found her. I was looking through the dust and I just found her on the ground. I would say just pick a topic you know mostly about or you 
feel more comfortable writing about and then put it into a three line or six line sentence and then make a twist that no one would see coming. Nature's beauty is breathtaking. Water shimmers, reflecting sunlight like a mirror. Clouds glow white and vibrant, pure beauty at its finest. It's interrupted, her smile angelic. True beauty finally revealed. Oh, oh. sweet. Very sweet, yeah. What's the twist? So when you, when you look at the first three or four lines, what do you think he's talking about? Nature. Nature. But in reality, what's the twist? What is he really talking about? A girl. A girl. Yes. A young lady. <laughs> there you go. Look at the third line. Clouds glow, white and vibrant. Very descriptive words, right? Would you say a metaphorical? Just oh, yeah. Exactly. Strong words. Really and I like, like the that. reflecting like a mirror. Yes. The comparison there. Yep, similarly. And I like the ellipses. And you read it correctly, too. So nature's beauty is breathtaking. breathtaking. Yeah. Yeah. It's effective. Feels, I think, lyrical as well. What were you thinking when you were composing this? Um, were you thinking of your girlfriend? I like girls, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like girls. Yes. Well, all right. <laughs> Alright, I like girls. Okay. <laughs> For me, the most interesting part was the twist, because I like that no matter what, you never see the ending coming in a shijo. My twist was that at the beginning, people think I'm describing nature's beauty, but in the end I twist it so that it's really about a girl. I like that it really makes you think deeper as opposed to most pieces of writing which is just you state a simple topic and that's that. And I also like that it has a structure that you have to follow but at the same time you can vary a little bit so that not every piece of writing is the same. I definitely feel the freedom because you still have the freedom to write about whatever you want and you have the variety of 44 to 46 syllables total, plus you can write either three lines or six lines, so I like that. My Shijo was about a star floating above a city, and there were uh, two sides of the city. One was very wealthy and one was very poor, and there was uh, both sides had problems, even though uh, other people, like if you're from a different side, you may think biased about the other side, and two people are wishing on the same star about a problem they have. But um, even though they come from different sides of the city, they both have their own problems. I'd have to say the most challenging part was trying to group the words because I was trying to keep it uh, three syllables together on each line and um, that was a bit of a challenge for me to keep to the syllable rules. Um, I liked how they interacted with the class more and they like asked questions to make sure we understood and that we had uh, you know some people come in to uh, help us with the culture aspect as well so that was really helpful. Whenever I'm trying to 
get something across to my students, the first thing I think about is my excitement, right? I can't expect my students to be more excited about something than I am. So I always try to find something that I can connect to with whatever we're writing. And with the Shijo, to me, it really, the structure was what attracted me to it, right? I, I can tackle this. I can take this first line and introduce the theme. And then I can take that first line and divide it into those different groupings. It felt manageable to me. And writing, some kids struggle with because it is an art. And in math and in science classes, it's so formulaic. And a lot of my students want writing to be like that. Just tell me what to do. Just give me the formula. And it's, for me as a writing teacher, that's hard because writing, there isn't a formula. I want you to tell me something only you could say. And so what excited me about Shijo was that it combined the structure that I thought kids would really be attracted to. It's almost like that mathematical or scientific formula that will work and then they can then insert their creativity and their own voice into that structure. We watched the video of the Harvard professor speaking on the Shijo form. So after watching the video, we thought about what could we do to bring sort of life and excitement to Shijo for our students. And so we used the resources on your website to just educate ourselves. Heidi and I, we had not heard of this form of poetry before your competition. And so we read the articles that you have online, we watched the video, and we just sort of said, okay, how can we take these resources and make them palatable to our students? I think that Shijo is something that my students have never heard of, right? And so probably the first place they go is Google, right? What else can I find out about this? And I think that that does open up their, their thinking, right? Oh my gosh, I, I've never, I didn't even know that people in different parts of the world wrote poetry in different ways. And how can I apply that to my own experience? And I think that what, that's what Shijo allows them. Shijo allows kids a little window into a different culture, right? Oh, this, this poem's like this. Oh, I never, I never thought about that before. Um, and I think it does. It, it excites them to learn about a different culture. It excites them to learn about writing in a different way. And that's really what we're trying to do in creative writing is just get them excited about writing. We have a really nice school here. We have a big school, about 2,300 students, and we have, we're, it's over two campuses, so we have the freshmen and sophomores in one building, the juniors and seniors in another building. There is a little bit of movement back and forth between the two buildings. Each building has a little bit of its own feel, a little bit of its own sense, but we're very, a very uh, successful school in many areas, academically, co-curricularly, we do very well. We have a super dedicated staff, of which I am super proud. We, you know, if you, if you come in, you see where it says something for everybody, and our classes are 40 minutes long, which is, which is a little bit tight for, for some of the teachers, and the idea is, is to offer as many opportunities for students as possible. So a student can take as many as nine classes in a semester which is not typical for a lot of schools, high schools, it's usually seven or at the most eight and sometimes just six, but we really want to have an opportunity for something for everybody so students can get, take the academic classes they like, but still have time in their schedule to take maybe a, maybe a choir class, maybe a tech ed class. I can think of a student that, that, that graduated a few years back who had a 4.0. She had a perfect score on her SAT, but she'd also taken and she'd taken all the academic classes, but she'd also taken all of our shop classes because she wanted to be an engineer and she felt it would be helpful for her to have that background of being able to know how to really do it as opposed to just the theoretical part of it from the, from the academic aspect. So it allows us to do that. And that's what our, um, from my perspective, my belief, and I think that is espoused by the board and the superintendent and everybody else, is that it's something for everybody. We want to have opportunities for students to expand their horizons. It's not just about getting into the college. It's not just about, uh, you know, having the best grades, you know, there can be. It's about developing a well-rounded student, someone that can, that can leave here, has the academic ability to go into whatever career they want, but also has those other life skills that are necessary to be successful that are not necessarily taught in a classroom um, with a book, and, but are taught through experiences. And that's really what it's about, having a, developing a well-rounded student.